Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kat Vlies from Central New Mexico Community College. We're going to take a look at urine in this first video on a series of videos on the urinary system. Before we discuss urine, let's just take a quick look at some of the main functions of the urinary system. Mind you, the urinary system has many functions. The kidneys in particular are extremely important organs in the body who play a role in regulating our blood and regulating all kinds of things uh, in relation to the blood. And as they do that, they of course create urine and as we excrete urine along with that, uh, we're going to be able to eliminate all kinds of wastes. And we can't forget that our kidneys are very important endocrine or organs as well. And one of the important hormones slash vitamins it produces is vitamin D. We'll eventually in future videos learn in great detail how our kidneys produce urine and how our urinary system excretes this urine. But let's just go over just a few facts that are related to urine. I think you're all aware of the fact that if you are nicely hydrated, your urine will be very watery looking. It'll have a very, very palish, yellowish tint to it. But the more dehydrated we become, the more intense uh, yellow it becomes to almost um, having a brownish tint to it. Now, the color of the urine can also indicate um, what kinds of drugs we might, ha might have ingested, uh, what kind of diet we tend to have. Um, and anything that looks cloudy is going to be indicative of the fact that there might be some kind of bacteria or other pathogens present in the urinary tract. So not a good thing. Fresh urine is sterile. It is also ever so slightly aromatic, but it doesn't become rather odorous and not pleasant to smell unless it's been sitting around for a while. And this has to do with the fact that uh, the nitrogenous wastes start to get converted to ammonia. Mind you, some of the things that we consume, whether they are drugs and even some of the vegetables that we ingest, such as asparagus, asparagus can really change the smell of urine. And this can also be dependent on your genetic makeup, whether this odor will actually uh, be apparent or not. Urine is also typically somewhat acidic, usually around a pH of 6. But again, this all depends once again on our diet. An acidic pH is, is of course more preferable because this will help fight off pathogens in the urinary tract. If we take a look at the gravity of urine, it has a range of uh, around one, maybe slightly over one, and this can increase depending on the solute concentration. As is the case with all of our body fluids, urine is no, no exception, meaning that it's mostly made up of water. And if we look at the, the you know, the 5% of solutes, we see that some of those solutes include nitrogenous wastes, which we're going to discuss more later on, particularly will bring up the importance of urea and even creatinine. Uric acid, of course, is also a nitrogenous waste. And then we excrete all kinds of electrolytes, some of the more important ones listed here. And how much we excrete of these all depends on the body's needs. So the next videos then will focus on the anatomy of the urinary system with, of course, an emphasis on the kidneys in particular and how they are important in not just the formation of urine, but in the role they play in blood regulation as well as hormone secretion.